Hi, this is Dr. Rick Janelle, and I want to talk to you today about the idea that discipline is not the same thing as punishment. Uh, I remember when uh, I was a grade school boy, my, uh, my uh, great-grandfather started me on my path to become a carpenter as my profession and as my trade, and uh, I've always fallen back on that at times in my life when I needed to earn some extra money or uh, things happen. I'm so very grateful for the things that he taught me, but I still remember the first project I ever helped him work on. He was visiting my family. He was building a closet for my parents, and uh, he laid out some uh, so he, he, he laid out some plywood. He popped a chalk line on it. He uh, started a whole row of nails and handed me a hammer and said, nail the rest of those in. I said, well, I've never done that before. And he says, do it. And the hammer was heavy. It felt strange in my hand. And uh, I bent the nails funny. And whenever I bent one, I had to pull it out. He'd put another one in and say, try it again. Try it again. Try it again. And about the time I got good at nailing in the nails that he had started, he upped the discipline. And he says, now take that next line next to it and start your own nails. And oh, that was not easy. I was clumsy with the hammer. I was clumsy with the nails. Uh, the first few times I hit my fingernails more than I hit the metal nails. And once again, every time I would bend a nail, he would say, pull it out and try again. Pull it out and try again. And that was burned into my head as one of the most painful mornings of my life. My fingers hurt. My hands hurt. But when I was done, I had a good start on knowing how to use a hammer and what the uh, costs were if you didn't use it well and didn't pay attention to what you were doing. And so that gives us an example of this idea of the dis difference between discipline and punishment. We tend to think when we find hard times that discipline us or things that are difficult for us to do or painful to get through, we tend to think that we're being punished. But that's not true at all. We find that also in Scripture. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 through 13 say, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Verse 7, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you're not disciplined, and everyone go undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate. You're not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of Spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. I want us to think about uh, four things that uh, this tells us about how we as God's people should view hardship. The first thing we notice is, uh, that in verses uh, 4 and 5, the writer of Hebrews says that when we suffer, we tend to, number one, think that things are worse than they really are. And number two, we forget what some really important things are important. Notice back in the passage, it says, you've not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Uh, people complain about being under house arrest with this COVID virus that we're having. Um, and I, I, I have to admit, I don't like it. And yet, it hasn't cost me any blood. It hasn't put me close to death. There are people with the virus that it has, and that's the reason for uh, the social distancing that we're going through. And you can argue about whether it's needed, whether it's valid, whether it's warranted. But the point is, as hard as this is, it's not as hard as we think that it is. It's not as difficult as we think that it is. And the second thing, we tend to forget some important things. It's important, the important things for Christians are we are supposed to view hardship as discipline. It's not that God is punishing us because he's angry with us. We've forgotten 
that we are sons and daughters of God. And because we are sons and daughters of God, there are some things we need to learn. There's some things that God expects out of his family. And so like any good father or mother, grandmother or grandfather, children have to be taught. And the teaching process sometimes is painful. Uh, Just like it was painful for me to learn how to hammer nails into a piece of plywood. Uh, I was so glad over and over through the rest of my life that I went through that pain and that I had a grandfather, great-grandfather actually, who loved me enough to let me suffer, to put me in a situation where I felt some pain so that in the future I could have a better life and a better income. The second thing I want us to look at from this thing is the thing that we have forgotten. We need to endure hardship as discipline, the writer of Hebrews says. Notice on the screen there that I've highlighted in yellow all the words that talk about discipline or hardship. God uses hardship for good in the, the life of his children. It's not that he's angry and he's punishing us. And according to what the writer of Hebrews here says, hardship is really discipline. And discipline is really proof that you belong to God. It's not that he's angry with you or throwing you away. It's he's pulling you closer and proving to the world and to you that you mean something to him, that you are important to him, that the outcome of your life is important to him. The third thing I want you to notice is he tells us that hardship and discipline are not pleasant. They are painful. And yet we tend to think that pain and the lack of pleasantness is proof that God doesn't love us or has forgotten us. No, it's exactly the opposite. When we're experiencing hardship, we are to think in our minds that this proves that God loves me. The fact that God allows me to face this uh, is him telling me I'm confident in you. You can do this. I have trust in your ability. You'll come out the other side being a better person because of this. And so you find down... um, In verse 10, the result for those trained by the hardship is a harvest of righteousness and peace. It's true that all people go through hardship, but it's also true that not everyone learns from the hardship. I used to work on crews. The the job foreman would sometimes say, that guy got one year's experience that he repeated 10 times. What he meant by that was the guy didn't learn anything. He might have been employed for 10 years, but he didn't have 10 years experience. For those of us that are Christians that have endured hardship, the more hardship we endure and the fact that we get through it produces righteousness and peace. It reminds us that there is a God. And so in hardship, we find ourselves turning to God in prayer. Well, many other times when times are good, we don't even think about turning to God. We we think we've got things handled. And the result of having gone through those things is a sense of confidence and peace that you can't get any other way. Confidence in the job world comes from experience. Uh, Confidence on a construction crew comes from experience. Confidence as a child of God comes from experience. And the experiences are sometimes good and they're sometimes bad, but they're all required to produce this peace and this righteousness. We find ourselves being a little more careful how we speak. We find ourselves being a little more careful how we act, how we interact with other people, how the things we do and the things we say, whether we've got a mask on our face or not, All these things didn't used to even come to our mind, and now we find ourselves being trained to be more thoughtful about how we present ourselves and how other people see us and interact with us. And so the last thing this passage tells us is this. He says in verse 12, Therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. What's he saying? He's saying that in the middle of hardship, we should stand tall. He's saying in the middle of hardship, We should be confident. We shouldn't be beat down. We shouldn't be discouraged. We shouldn't be gripers and complainers. Why? Because the hardship, if you're a child of God, proves that God loves you. And if you're being trained by that hardship, the hardship is not in vain. The price you're paying is not uh, not a worthless cause. It's not lost. It's not lost on you if you're a child of God and if you're being disciplined by these things. And so let hardship carve some things deep into your heart and into your head. What should they carve? Hardship should carve deep inside you who you are and whose you are and why you're here and where you're going. And as those things get carved deeply inside of you with your walk with God through good times and in bad, it's the walk with God through the hard times that gives you the confidence 
and the peace and the courage to know that unless the Lord comes back, tomorrow's another day. And whatever hardship is in your life, the, the living through hardship teaches us that hard days don't last forever. And as you go older and get older and wiser, you learn that the good days don't either. Good days come and go. Bad days come and go. And the only thing that matters at the end of all of it is, how has your heart responded? How is your mind? How are you treating others? What's your relationship with like, like with God? And so for those who are being trained correctly by hardship, hardship is not a good thing, but it is a good thing. It's a painful thing, but it's a needed thing. Don't forget that discipline is not punishment. This hardship that you're facing if you're a child of God, it's not because God has forgotten you. It's because he loves you. And the hardship itself is proof that you are his and that he has claimed you and that he is molding you in ways that you can't ever understand today.